just stamping out my stamp. Still a minute early. We'll see if there's anybody out in Facebook land today. Let's see what y'all are doing on the Saturday morning. Or depending where you are, Saturday afternoon. Who's here? I am just feeling like I want to color. I don't know how well it's going to turn out today because I'm wicked shaky. But sometimes that's just how life goes. We're using the He Laughs at My Jokes stamp set. And I just stamped out the girl and her silly little hyena friend. I love this stamp set. It makes me smile just to look at it. And that's why I chose it today. Um, I really need a smile today. So that's what we're doing. color with my handy dandy hex chart hanging out so I'm gonna start with my E triple zero and I'm just gonna wet the paper it's kind of like how a painter uses primer um, just gonna prime the paper um, I do this only with skin. There's very few other things that I do this with. But I make sure that I prime the paper with when I'm coloring skin. And I've used um, Memento Desert Sand to stamp this in so I can get kind of that no line effect. And she doesn't have like a lot of skin showing, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use all of it. Or color all of it at the same time. Now, I am taking both caps off of my markers um, because there's a core inside here. It's essentially cotton wrapped in um, plastic. And the more ink that's in there, the more pressure that's created. And so if you don't take both caps off, then eventually um, all the ink wants to go to the point of least resistance. So what that means is it will all come down the nib that is closest to the paper, the nib that is down with gravity. And so you don't want all the ink rushing down towards that nib. So by taking both caps off, you're able to control that a little more by letting airflow in there. Which will prevent that whole thing from happening. So there you go. Hi, Natalie. I don't know what time of day it is for you over in France, but it's still morning here, so good morning. I'm sure it's evening for you, or night, as it were. Okay, 
So just kind of hover above the paper, nice, easy, soft brush strokes. Um, this is, it's 7 p.m. Well, there you go. Um, this is a brush nib. So the whole point is to be able to use brush strokes. And when I first started coloring, um, painting was way out of the realm for me. So using quote unquote brush strokes was very intimidating for me. Um, now that I think of it like brush strokes, it makes it a lot easier to digest what I'm doing when I'm coloring. Is it super warm there? I went and picked my sister and my niece up from the airport last night. Um, very late. And so we're going to have um, afternoon, probably like wine and french fries from this amazing fry place here in Boise. So we're going to do that a little bit later this afternoon. Maybe sit out on the porch and enjoy the nice weather we have today. We have some beautiful weather going on right now, so little bit breezy. Okay, now I know that I'm gonna make her wearing jeans and so I wanna make these kind of like ripped jeans. So I'm gonna start with the shadow and I'm gonna put this rip around her knee and then I'm going to put this rip like on her thigh. Because that's pretty much how ripped jeans go. Okay. The supermarket was already warm. <laughs> okay, so the next color in my color blend is E11. I know it's counterintuitive that I do E11 before E21, but it is a darker color. And I'm gonna take that E04 that I just used and pull it back into the shadows. Or push it back into the shadows, depending on which direction you're coloring. Because I don't want to continually pull it into the highlight because then that will make my highlight very muddy. And this stamp set is available. If you're interested in the stamp set, it is in our shop. It's called He Laughs at My Jokes. Um, it kind of came from, my husband and I were sitting on the couch one evening and watching, you know, like Instagram reels and Facebook reels and TikTok videos and all that stuff. And there was this video that this guy had posted. Um, hi, Julie. Yeah, Natalie, this is the ink that I use for no line coloring. Um, and so we were sitting there watching all these videos and this guy posted this video. Um, I guess they rescued a hyena um, when it was, you know, just born like the mother died in childbirth or something, you know, I mean, it's a hyena, Lord only knows what happened to it. And um, so they've had this hyena for years now and they, it grew up just like their pet, like you would have a dog. Um, and so it showed 
um, they did a like, what if you walked in the house to burglarize us and you heard this? And they had the camera on and it was the hyena laughing. You know how it giggles, how they have the hyena giggle. And um, when they shown the camera on his face, of course, his eyes glow. And we were laughing, my husband and I were laughing that wouldn't it be funny to, you know, have a hyena as a pet. Um, and if somebody tried to rob you, like the look on their face when they walked into the house and there wasn't a dog there to greet them, but a freaking hyena, um, that would be more than a little scary. And of course this hyena was like, you know, just wanted to be petted and loved just like a puppy dog. But just to hear that, that hyena cackle when you came into the house would be definitely give you pause. <laughs> and so that's where the sentiment on this set came from or where the idea of this whole set came from is the premise that you have a hyena as a pet. Jules, are you working today or are you off today? Yeah, so the neighbor just went by jogging with her dog, and that's my own little hyena right there, barking at them. Three-day weekend, hooray! Yeah, that's why my sister and niece came up from California, because they have a three-day weekend. My niece works in the banking industry, and my sister um, works in the school. So they both got a three-day weekend, so they decided to come up for a visit, which I'm very grateful for because I haven't seen them for quite some time. Did you go get them, Archie? Thank you for protecting me, little boy. Notice I turn my paper a lot while I'm coloring. Don't forget that you always want to have your arm in a comfortable position or your wrist in a comfortable position. Um, you're watching me at the same time. Well, good thing I'm doing skin and hair, huh? Um, you always, always want to have your wrist in a comfortable spot so that when you're coloring, your brush strokes are nice and even, like you want them to be. Now, a lot of her facial features are gonna go away because I colored this no lines, so don't be alarmed. We will draw them back in. Anyways, we have this um, restaurant here called Satisfry, and they, Sandy loves it. When she comes here, we eat there several times. Um, and they serve air fried french fries. Um, so they're not, you know, dripping with grease. And then they top them with all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, Yes, you're turning the page to be comfortable. Good job. Um, thank you, Julie. I'm super happy about the thousand sweeties. We're gonna do a giveaway here pretty soon. 
I have a tumbler to give away from Pine Barn Creations. Anyways, um, so they make these air fried french fries and they put different toppings on them. And so they do like the pizza one, um, which is amazing. Um, and so they put like marinara sauce and pepperoni and cheese all on top of the french fries. Um, and that's epic. Um, they do the coney, which is like a chili dog and onions and stuff and cheese, of course. Um, they do the Quebec, which is like poutine. So brown gravy and cheese curds. Um, they do, I don't know, just so many different ones. My favorite one is the, um, uh, it's called the blue buffalo but I don't like blue cheese, so I get the buffalo minus the blue. <laughs> but it's buffalo sauce and chicken and bacon and green onions and ranch dressing. And it's amazing. And they even do dessert fries, which sounds totally weird, but they do like sweet potato fries with um, marshmallows and cinnamon and sugar and frosting. So I wanna try those one day. And then they make craft sodas. So yeah, it's very cool. I wonder where Cheryl is today. Stoner fries? Yeah. Um, well, in Idaho, you have to differentiate because we have tachos, which is nachos made out of tater tots. So um, you have to differentiate between tachos and fries. And I know French fries aren't even French because <laughs> French people don't do that. Oh, I could not imagine it with popcorn. That's weird. Archie. Archie. Please stop. Come here. Hey. Come here. Come here. Archie. Come here. Come here. I don't know. There must be a delivery at our front door. I could not imagine doing that with popcorn. That seems very odd to me. Um... Bear, I'm live. So, yeah. And, um, oh, it's not a delivery. It's my mother-in-law. That's why. He's all excited. He's happy that his grandma's here. Yeah. Yeah, he gets so excited. And cheesy popcorn. Pop a bag of popcorn and put M&Ms in it. It's still warm. Yeah, I've seen people do that. And um, like white chocolate and like zebra popcorn where they put like white chocolate and dark chocolate drizzle on it. Um, I've seen people put like Parmesan on popcorn too. I have a friend that calls Parmesan cheese Parmesan cheese. It cracks me up. I don't know if she really thinks that. Like, I know at the beginning she really thought that it was Parmesan. <laughs> um, and we corrected her. But I think now she just still just says it to spite us. I 
I guess popcorn's just a magical food, huh, Julie? Julie, do you mind tagging some people? Um, aluminum? Oh, do they say aluminum weird? I'm going to have to have one of my British friends say aluminum for me. Now I'm really curious. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm not even gonna attempt to say that. They add extra stuff. <laughs> I know that Cheryl would be sad if she missed this video. So. Oh, there it is. It lets me tag her. There we go. I didn't like advertise that I was going to be live. I just jumped on because I felt like coloring. to smooth out the rest of that color blend. And there she has beautiful denim jeans. Now we're gonna add the little strings on here later. Um, I like to wait till this dries completely. have an idea of what color of hair they would like or should I just go for it I know I'm gonna start with e30 I mean RV 34 to put in her mouth and in the hyena's mouth um, this is my favorite color to use inside the mouth There we go. And I know that's gonna look super weird there for a bit, but that's okay. Um, I think that, I think I'm gonna give her a purple shirt, but like a plummy purple shirt. You got time to do black curly hair? Um, I can. I don't know how I would make her hair curly, but I can try. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out V28, and I'm gonna find it on here. Um, and then I wanna do like a plum colored shirt. That's why I'm really looking. Um, let's do V17. And BB04, 
V13. And BV02. Internet cuts out. Yep, that happens a lot. Okay, so there's a little bit of her shirt over here under her hair. Now with no lines, you don't want to just come and trace everything. You want to just outline where you think there would be shadows. Because if you trace everything, then you lose the dimension. It just becomes a coloring book at that point. So her knee would cast a shadow. Where there's artist drawn lines, of course, there's gonna be a shadow. So not everything is in shadow. Teal hair. <laughs> I could do like black and teal dip dyed hair. Now this purple is going to be considerably brighter. I'm doing that because I want to add a little bit of the bright color to it, but I'm going to bring it back down with the subsequent colors. So again, notice I'm rotating the paper. Thank you, Julie, for tagging people. I appreciate it. So this BV is more blue, so it's definitely going to bring that brighter purple back down into more of a plum color. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how many new sweeties we've gotten over the last couple of days. I'm super excited for that. It's very cool. I love to see the group growing and I love to see people participating and, um, get your stamps out because the thousand member scenario, I'm gonna make you use your stamps. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be sneaky like that, make y'all.
use your stamps. That's a pretty plummy purple shirt. It's like a bluish purple. I kind of want it for myself. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure with that shirt, she would probably be wearing black flats. So that's what I'm gonna draw. These are like Tom's, remember the Tom's shoes? I'm gonna use my neutrals just because I don't want to lean this one way dark or light. I mean warm or cool. I know I said dark or light. I didn't mean that. I meant warm or cool. died. Which one? Your sub printer or your normal printer? Yeah, Julie, they totally look like Tom's. They would, especially if I made the little thing across the top of them. Um, you know how the material on the Toms is like folded? Oh, this is in five. But I think just simple black flats will do. Okay. Actually, if you want me to do her hair dip dyed, I'm just gonna use those as well. Which printer, pal? not 100% sure why this girl always ends up with um, with um, black hair, but for some reason she always ends up with black hair for me. I just deformed her face. Yeah, where's Linda Lou? So I put the teal across her face. So now I'm just gonna use one of the face colors to kind of wash that out and make her face round again. 
And we'll see once that dries if I need to do another coat of it. Okay, um, and then 45. The jeans is awesome. Wait till I get the finishing touches on them, Natalie. My neighbors are out doing their yard work. I'm sure you can hear that. Yeah, these are jeans. I colored them as jeans, denim, whatever. Yep, I just have finishing touches to add to them. So they'll be better when I'm finished. some reason I cannot do my brush strokes towards or away from my body today. So. And then I'm going to do her eyebrow. looks a little scary right now but it'll get better yeah I'm gonna add details Then I'm gonna go back to the teals and re-add some color. And then I am going to go back to this face color one more time and take a little bit more of that teal out of her face. Sometimes trying to fix it makes it worse, so. I'm going to go with my darker color, my E21. several 
different colors, sorry, of multi-liners. So I'm gonna start with my point five. Oh no, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted point oh five. There we go. My point oh five. <laughs> And add her eyes. And then I have my point oh three in black. There we go. Okay. And then I'm also going to use this brown to kind of outline her mouth a little bit to add some definition back in there. Just like that. Um, then I'm going to grab my white gel pen and we're going to add some details to the jeans. So usually when your jeans are ripped, you have the threads across them and then you have all of the frayed stuff. And just be patient putting on different layers. Archie, no, please. And it just makes them look a little bit more realistic. There we go. Also, we'll add a little highlight to her shoe. And a couple of highlights in her hair. Just where the sun is hitting it the most. All right. So now we're going to move on. Coloring our hyena. Okay. So, hyenas are lots of different colors. Excuse me. I like to kind of make mine a little bit like rusty colored. I like to go out of the box a little bit, especially since this is so heavy in the blues. Um, I want this to be more of like a coppery, rusty color. So I'm gonna start fairly dark with my E29. Um, then I'm gonna move into E18. Do I want 18 or 19? I think I'm gonna do E19. Um, then I'm going to go E99. YR27. 
and YR24. Hi, there's my friend Laura. Hello, hello. Okay, so E29 is first. And hyenas have spots, but I'm going to add those in a little bit later. So I'm going to color all of the fur first. So this is where a lot of people get, um, you know, kind of in their own heads about it and nervous about it is because they're worried about coloring around the spots. I always color the spots in last um, after I've colored everything else. So the biggest thing when coloring animals is to just make sure you're going with the way their fur would grow. So um, this is like the shaggy part on the back of his leg. Um, and then when I come down his back, I'm gonna come down this direction because that's the way the fur would grow on his back. And then be really careful to not touch where the girl is. Like I said, I'm doing way better at brush strokes towards my body today. So I'm gonna embrace that. Goodness gracious, Archie. The neighbor's dog came out in the front yard. So of course, he has to protect me against a dog that, you know, does absolutely nothing. <laughs> She's super, super, super old. And so she just, you know, kind of, she's very mellow. And she just walks around. Like even when other dogs walk by, she just walks around, lays in the grass. She's a big black lab, her name's Raven. And then I'm gonna go this direction because that's the way the fur would grow on his neck. And then um, I wanna come down here and where his front paw is would leave a shadow on his back leg. So come out that direction. And again, around the girl. Okay. Now, the bottoms of their paws are generally black and they fade in, but this is like his knee. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna come like that and like that. Just like that. So notice how I'm making that curve in both of those directions. Okay, so same thing, I'm gonna come under his chin here And around, this is like his belly, and then this is his back leg. So I'm gonna come around this direction and this direction. So it takes a bit to like figure out where you're going with the shadow, but it's, really nice to um, take that time and figure out where your shadows are and which direction they're going, which direction you want them to go, because it really helps to map all of that out and you'll get a much more dimensional critter
and your brush strokes do make a difference. Which direction they're going, they do make a difference. And then he has this little divot in his back from his shoulder. And then I'm gonna come down this front leg where his chest is leaving a shadow. And then his belly right here. Okay, I think that's just about all. I'm gonna put some little lines on his face. Um, their faces tend to be kind of black as well, but I want to have this brown base to it. Little wrinkles of his nose, where his ears come out. I can't color this hyena and not think of the hyenas from The Lion King. You missed some of it, but you can go back and watch it, Miss Cheryl. That's why I tagged you. I didn't have like a plan to come on today. I just came on because I felt like coloring. And so here I am just a color in a way, coloring this silly hyena. I know watching the replay is not the same, but I know a lot of people who prefer watching the replay, and I know a lot of people who like won't watch the replay. So, whatever tickles your fancy. So we're just talking about color and critters, making sure that the direction of your brush strokes follow the direction that their hair would be growing. And then the coloring after you've laid down all of your shadow gets a lot faster. So really do just take the time to lay in that shadow and do it right because then that sets you up for the rest of your coloring. You watch both. Well, that's good. I appreciate that. So you like that we put them on YouTube when we're done on Facebook Live? That way you have access to them. and you can find them easily. Okay, so now E99. He'll look a lot better too when he gets his spots.
I tend to make my hyenas a little bit dark. They, um, not all of them are quite this, this shade. There's different, different kinds of hyenas from different locations. And so they have adapted and their fur is different colors. Um, I don't know why I make them dark. It's just the colors that appeal to me, I suppose. But I have colored him rainbow too, so you know. If there's a such thing as a rainbow hyena in my world, I'm sure there's a such thing as a rusty colored hyena in my world. It's a great thing about coloring. You can make it whatever you want it to be. Because it's your card, it's your coloring. You guys are awfully quiet out there. Okay. Now, I will be going back through some of these colors um, because as I make his paws darker, um, it, you know, you have to... marry the colors together. I don't know, I'm forgetting my words. Blend, that's what I'm looking for. Blend the colors together. Apparently I need more coffee today. I need more coffee always, but. This guy's a super rare orange hyena. <laughs> Archie, honey. I swear, that dog. Does he, does he startle you like he startles me? I feel sorry if any of you are wearing headphones to watch this. Okay, so granted, I know. Thanks, Cheryl. We're gonna we're gonna do a a contest. We've been trying to get to a thousand for a long time. It feels like, and then all of a sudden, it just jumped like really jumped. So, all right, so I'm gonna go with my W's because I want them to be warm colors. And I'm gonna outline his little paws. And this one. And then shadow. And then shadow. I'm gonna put a little outline on his little toes. And same with this one. Okay, then I'm gonna come up here. And I'm gonna outline his nose. I'm gonna make his nose darker, so I'm just gonna outline it for now.
I was saying earlier that I'm gonna create a contest and make you guys work. Make you use those stamps. I want to see what people do with their Sweet Sentiment stamps. So, be looking for that. And I have a couple of Pine Barn Creation tumblers to give away. I've been collecting some prizes, knowing that we were getting close to a thousand. It's W6, so now I'm gonna go to W5. There's a very low flying aircraft over my house right now. Very, very low flying. We live fairly clo close to the airport here. Um, not the major international airport, just a little regional airport. And um, so sometimes we get to watch quite the aerial spectacular, especially when they're having like air shows and stuff here. It's really cool. Um, we are kind of in their flight path, so to speak. So it's really fun when they have air shows and stuff. We can sit out on the back porch and have a glass of wine and watch all the cool aerial phenomena <laughs> that happens. So now I'm gonna go to W3. into his legs so that they blend together. Color his chin. And his cheeks. Now this part is all hair, so I'm gonna lighten that. Put this dark color inside of his ears. And then we're going to go back to our hair blend. Sorry, this is that E29. See, if you guys don't talk, then I don't talk. I get all quiet. And I just concentrate on my coloring. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to ask. Oh no, is your internet just not working out for you, Natalie? And so his face doesn't look entirely two-toned. I like to kind of marry these colors together a little bit. I come off from his nose. And then I want his nose to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go into my W's. I'm gonna grab W9. Hey, Jen, how are you? And 
and then my W7, if I can find it, there it is. And then I'm gonna blend that out a little bit with my W5. Oh, look at him taking shape. And then my W3. Awesome. So now um, I'm going to use my E04 on his tongue because it's darker around all those crazy teeth in there. And then so it doesn't look like just a big blob. I'm going to grab my colorless blender and I'm going to add, that's the wrong end. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to his tongue. And then I'll use my gel pen to color in those teeth. Sometimes I use like a slightly yellow um, just because I feel like they don't have the best dental hygiene. But hey. And then I like to add a little crescent on top of his nose. All right. So now we all know a hyena needs spots. So I'm going to go back in with my W9. And I'm just going to add some little brush strokes. Again, the way that the hair would grow into the shadows. Not too many, but just a few. Then I'm gonna stair stack down into W7. Then W5. There you go. And then you didn't have to color around those spots. So, there you go. Too much heat. That is our cute little hyena and girl for the day. Um, thank you for joining me. I Like I said, this was a completely impromptu live, so we were just coloring for the fun of it. And now I'm going to go get ready for my sister and niece to come over. And um, we're going to have lunch together. And yeah, that's it. So thank you again for joining me. And um, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Toodles.